I've flown back on those 130s with caskets draped coming out of Iraq and Afghanistan. I've been there at Dover Air Base. And those bodies come home. You know, and think of all the folks, and you all know it, coming home with unseen injuries. Tens of thousands coming home with unseen injuries, post-traumatic stress, traumatic brain injury, mental health challenges. As a nation, I've been criticized for this over the last 30 years when I've said it, but as a nation, we have many obligations to our children, to the elderly, to the poor, to those in need. But I believe we only have one truly sacred obligation, to prepare and equip our troops that we send into harm's way and to care for them and their families when they return. We owe our veterans the future of security and dignity that they've earned, and it starts by protecting the VA. Restoring the trust in the VA because the VA must be the premier provider of health care services to promote our veterans' overall well-being. That's why the VA has more specialized knowledge about how to treat veterans' unique health needs beyond physical and mental than the private sector does by far. It provides a community of understanding and support, facilitates accountability for veterans' health and well-being as a whole that is absolutely vital for successful outcomes. We have a responsibility to ensure that we're providing veterans with world-class health care they deserve in every situation. That means hiring more doctors and medical personnel and professionals to work at the VA, including positions essential to veterans' health care, nurses and psychologists. We need to offer these medical professionals the incentive to join the VA. We need to pay them and competitive salary of the private sector. We also have to do more to build a pipeline of doctors and nurses, especially in rural areas. If you live far away from a VA center, it's absolutely essential that you can see a doctor closer to home. That's why during our administration, President Obama signed the VA Access Choice and Accountability Act into law in 2014. President Trump's like to say he passed the VA Choice. But just like everything else he seems to be saying, it's a figment of imagination or it's a flat lie. Now we need to keep working to implement the Mission Act effectively and efficiently so that it works for all our veterans, while always making sure community care providers are held to the same high quality standard as VA centers. We're gonna make sure our women veterans and our LGBTQ veterans get the service and respect they deserve from culturally competent providers. And critically, we're going to make sure that no veteran is locked out of treatment for conditions related to toxic exposure from burn pits or traumatic brain injuries they experienced in the line of duty. We made that mistake with Agent Orange. As a senator, I fought for decades to help Vietnam veterans get access and help. We were able to expand on it during the Obama-Biden administration. We can't let this be delayed again. Denying access because the vet could not prove a direct connection if you're exposed to Agent Orange was wrong. It's to be presumed if the ailment you have is caused by your exposure to Agent Orange that you get treatment. We've got it. We've got to seriously tackle the mental health crisis we have. A suicide academic, uh, epidemic is claiming far too many are veterans and service members. You know, one of the saddest things when my son came home after, after a year in Iraq, he was back at the, as attorney general. And the week before Christmas, he came over to the house and he said, Dad, I don't know what I'm going to do. There was a Marine veteran who had been deployed a total of six times, if my memory is correct, who was in a relatively a, a, a modern, upscale neighborhood, middle-class neighborhood. And they get up in the morning, and they get out, 
in his, I think it was a Dodge Ram, started down the street in front of his house, which was no sidewalks. Saw a woman walking her dog, ran over her, killed her, killed the dog, put her in the back of his pickup truck, took her down to I-95, right by where the, where there was the, uh, all the sand pile for emergencies. Molested her, put her back in the truck, came home, and called the state police and said, I just killed someone. There was a voice in my head saying, I had to kill someone. I had to kill someone, turned himself in. You know, the latest data suggests that almost 600 veterans as well are dying by suicide every year, just here in Florida, 600 a year. It's devastating. There aren't any easy answers to this, but we can do so much better than we're doing now. We have an obligation to do so much better. We have to help our heroes understand that it's an honorable thing to do and take strength to reach out and ask for help if they're suffering from unseen wounds. They're so accustomed to being asked not to ask for anything. We have to end the stigma surrounding mental health treatment. When they do reach out, when they call the crisis hotline, or walk into a VA hospital, or visit a VA center for counseling, we have to make sure, damn sure, that there's no one turns them away. No one tells them they have to wait. Part of it's also making sure better employment opportunities meaningful career trajectories, education like the one student vets get here at Hillsborough Community College, which translated into greater opportunities for our vets, not just put money on the pockets of for-profit fraudulent outfits, because we got to stop that. It all matters. It especially matters how their families are treated. John Milton, the poet, wrote these lines. They also serve who only stand and wait. Well, military families, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, they serve every single day. Tending to their specific needs and unique challenges should never be an afterthought for us. It's a national security imperative. Fulfilling our promise to our veterans and our military families, caregivers and survivors is critical to ensuring we not only meet our obligations, but the future generations continue to volunteer to serve. My wife, Jill, she worked on this more than about anyone. During our administration, she and Michelle Obama teamed up and started an outfit called Joining Forces, a nationwide initiative to drive concrete commitments to support service members, veterans and their families and caregivers and survivors to help make sure teachers are equipped to better meet the needs of military children in their classrooms, and help bring down some of the barriers because the vast majority, the vast majority of those kids in the school have no idea what little Johnny or Mary or Jamal is worried because his mommy or daddy is stationed in a foreign land. Our military is the greatest fighting force in the history of the world, and that's not hyperbole. It's a the God's truth deserves a commander in chief who respects their sacrifice, understands their service, and will never betray the values they defend. They deserve better than goes on now with their commander in chief. And if I have the honor of ever serving as the next commander in chief, I want every single member of the armed forces, our veterans, their families, their caregivers, and their survivors to know I will never treat you with anything other than the honor and respect and dignity you deserve. I always have your back, like you've had our back, the country's back. Thank you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.